Hello, I'm Ann Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. Using salt with watercolour to create special effects is something that can be quite exciting. However, I've heard quite a few people say that they've tried this and it just hasn't worked. So I thought what I would do is I would do some experimenting to try and find out why it doesn't work. So this video is all about the results of those experiments. So, are you ready? Just in case you haven't used salt with watercolour before, all you do is put your watercolour down and you take some ordinary salt, you sprinkle it on and then you leave it to dry completely. Now that's important. It must be completely dry. I usually leave mine overnight and then I know that I'm going to get the best possible results. So nothing could be much easier than that. Let's have a look at the different salts. Now these are some of the different salts you can get and they vary from the big rock salt right down to the very fine table salt. Now this is sea salt, coarse and fine. Not a lot of difference between the fine sea salt and the table salt. And the experiments that I've been doing, I've used this one, which is the coarse sea salt. And here it is. That's the one that I've used for all my experiments. So just to let you know what I've been using it's ordinary straightforward cooking salt, nothing magical about it. Now in order to make some really good comparisons, what I've done is I've used two different kinds of paper and I've taken my ordinary everyday paint box and I've just taken some random colours from my paint box and painted more or less the same colours on each of the papers. Now this paper is 100% cotton hot press and this is 100% cotton cold press. I haven't experimented on cellulose or wood pulp paper because I don't possess any. So I can only go on the, on the cotton paper. If you've got cellulose paper or wood pulp paper then experiment with that. It might work really, really well. I don't know. So let's have a look at both of these. Let's scrape off the salt first of all. Now these were done in exactly the same way as you watched me do this blue one when we started. I just painted a little, a little swatch of colour and dropped the salt directly on without waiting. So everyone's been done exactly the same way. Now this is the hot press paper and I think you can clearly see that the hot press paper doesn't seem to work as well as the cold press paper. You see this cobalt blue here, and there's the cobalt blue. It's a very big difference between those two, between the hot press and the cold press. And look at the permanent orange here. Look at the difference between the hot press and the cold press. So because these, I think, have worked much better than the hot press, I'm going to get rid of the hot press one so that we can keep everything really simple. So let's have a look at these. Now I've heard a lot of people say that granulating paints, which are paints where all the little particles collect together and give a spotty effect, um, granulating paints work better with salt. Well, when we look at these in detail in a minute, you're going to find that that's not actually strictly true. It can be a bit confusing because this is ultramarine blue and ultramarine blue is one of my most granulating paints 
well, it hasn't worked very well here. And yet this one, which is permanent orange, is not granulating. And look at the difference in the effect. Over here, we've got burnt umber, which is granulating. But we've also got burnt sienna, which is granulating. And one has worked really, really well. And one has worked not quite so well. It's given a completely different effect, which you might actually like. But this is the effect I'm going for, the sort of bleaching out of the colour. This one is absolutely stunning, it really is. This is cobalt blue. And this one, although it may not come out wonderfully on the camera, this is Hansa Yellow Medium. Now, I've done it again on, on a different piece of paper. This is the Hansa Yellow Medium. And the, I think because this is a bigger swatch, you can really see that that works really, really well. And yet Hansa Yellow Medium is not a granulating paint. <laughs> so it doesn't always follow that because it's granulating, it's going to react well with the salt. And if it's not granulating, it's not going to react well. Now this is one of the most interesting things. When I looked at the greens, now these are both greens that I've mixed up myself. And I've mixed up these greens using ultramarine blue. And it just hasn't worked very well. And I wonder if it's the ultramarine blue in the greens that's causing it not to work. Because the um, Pyrrhaline green, which is this one, I've done it on a, on a bigger swatch here. See how beautifully that's worked. And here again, this is a green that I've mixed up myself like these two. And it really, really hasn't worked very well. Now here I tried a different kind of cold press paper. It's still 100% cotton. But this is a different brand. Now this one, this one, this one and this one are all granulating paints. And these two are non-granulating. <laughs> so if anything, the non-granulating ones work better than some of the granulating ones. So, you know, the, the theory that granulating paints work better than non-granulating paints I'm afraid that theory goes out the window as far as I'm concerned. So what I did next was I took the best ones from the test that I did on the cold press paper and I made slightly larger swatches of them and again put on the coarse sea salt. Now I've put little ticks and crosses on these so that you can you can tell whether they're basically a granulating paint or a non-granulating paint. That's granulating. That's not. That's not. That's what they call low granulation. So it's in between, in between granulating and not granulating. That's granulating. That's not. That's not. And that's not. <laughs> So you can see it's really important to experiment with your paints to find out which ones work well with the salt and which ones don't. Now there is no point in me really giving you all the different brand names and the different colours that I've got here because the paints that you've got in your paint box will be totally different to the ones I've got. And you just have to experiment with the ones that you have. But I think you can see now that there is a very good reason why sometimes when we try to use salt with watercolour, it doesn't work. Look at the ultramarine. I was so surprised. I thought that would be absolutely fantastic because I've watched other people put salt onto ultramarine and it is a fantastic result, <laughs> but not my brand of it. So you do need to experiment. I also discovered that if you have a very wet, humid day, the salt absorbs moisture from the atmosphere and becomes quite damp. 
Now if you use salt that's damp, its ability to suck up the paint or the water on your paper is vastly reduced. So that is another reason why sometimes the salt doesn't work. So we can use big chunks of rock salt right down to the fine grains of the table salt depending on the results that you want and you can only find out what you want by experimenting. We have to be careful of the paper that we use because it works better on some papers than on others and we need to practice with the colours that we're going to be using in our painting before we actually do the painting just in case they don't work. I hope this little experiment has been useful and it's given you an idea to maybe go and try out some salt with watercolour. It's really exciting. And if you've enjoyed this video, then consider clicking that little subscribe button and the bell icon because that lets you know when I upload another video for you. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. And remember, there is an artist in everyone. Bye for now.